<laughs> hello, hello, hello. Nice to see every, everyone. My name is Matt Thompson. I am the Public Affairs Officer at the American Consulate in Yekaterinburg. Nice to see all of you. I get to see, I can, I'm going to put some of your, your uh, comments up on the screen. Um, you'll notice last week I took a week off. I needed, I needed a break. I was tired. <laughs> so I spent some time at home with my family, um, just um, going to the park, um, relaxing a little bit and spending some time with my daughter and my wife and my wonderful dog, uh, Frida. So uh, today we were going to do a little um, experiment, but I, we were going to add our friends here. They're probably telling me now in Vladivostok to join us. Uh, we have a technical difficulty, but I hope that if you are watching from uh, Vladivostok later, that you will join us next week uh, at Tuesday. And I believe it's at 4 or 5 o'clock your time. We do it at 11.30 here. So, um, so if you haven't been with us before, this is a live lesson, English lesson. Um, I try to present some practical things you can learn about the language. English is extremely difficult sometimes. But with practice, and I think with some hard work, you can get better. I currently, my journey in Russian uh, is similar to yours in English, probably. Um, I understand a lot of Russian. I can speak Russian. Uh, it, I sound really good sometimes. But other times, I'm very confused. And a lot of that has to do with idioms or slang or phrases and some grammar that's very difficult. So I hope this lesson will help you. And later on, if you're watching, um, just uh, you can, I'll put, try to put, put up the PDF so that you can download that and use it yourself. But right now, I'd like to say hello to my friends who are online right now. I'll, I'll be in a Tatiana, uh, multiple Tatianas, uh, Constantine, Yekaterina, Darina, Yulia, Dmitri, Daria, Rustam, uh, Mr. Kreshak, nice to see you. So um, let's get started. Um, I have three things to share with you today. One's about grammar. One is about um, some slang terms for lazy people. And what's my other one? I think I always forget what my full presentation is. But let's move to the third. Informal greetings. That's right. Informal greetings. So, like you, you know hello, you know hi, uh, you know how are you. But sometimes Americans use all sorts of phrases to greet one another. I'm saying hello to Svetlana, Olga, Alexei. So I'm going to walk you through some common, maybe slangish, but pretty common uh, phrases that we use as Americans to greet one another, whether it's some we, somebody we know or somebody we don't know. So the first one is, what's up? You've probably heard this in movies. If you want to get really into slang, deep into slang, you'd say, sup. You just would cut off what and just go sup. But what's up just means, uh, how are you? <laughs> And here your answer would be, not much, you. So if you ever hear somebody uh, asking you, what's up? They're not talking about the sky. They're talking about, hello, how are you? It's a for very informal. It's informal. I wouldn't use this with your boss unless you have a good relationship with him or her. All right. So next, howdy. Uh, this is an informal term that maybe people use in smaller cities or maybe out in, in very small towns. It's an informal way of greeting somebody. And it's, it just means hello. Howdy. How you doing? I think it's from how you doing, but they just cut it down. Howdy. So your answer would be hello. Nothing, nothing else. That's a pretty easy one. If you have any questions about this, send it to me. I can see your questions now. Nice to see you and glad to see you as well, Alexander. Another really informal 
greeting. Yo. Uh, this is probably more for young people, uh, but probably people my age might say with their friends, hey, yo, what's up? Yo is just to get someone's attention, and it means hello. So you can answer, yo, how are you doing? How are you doing? Now you might answer, I cut out a word. There's a famous uh, show, which you all know, Friends, where the, one of the characters, Joey, made this kind of a, f a famous phrase. Cause he, he would, he, when he'd see a, a woman he liked, he'd always say, how you doing? And uh, I had a roommate in college who used to say that all the time uh, to, uh, to women, but also to everybody. <laughs> so yo is just another uh, greeting. Uh, here's a strange one, but I hear people say it all the time. I think I say it sometimes. Is long time no see. Uh, I think the phrase in Russian is skolkalet, no skolkalet, skolkazim. Skolkalet, skolkazim. Means you haven't seen somebody for a long time. And so you could answer, yes, it's been a long time. Uh, they're just trying to, I don't know how you use it in Russian. I've used skolkalet, skolkazim when I haven't seen anybody, my colleagues for a long time. And they usually laugh because it's uh, kind of a funny phrase. If uh, right now, if we're watching, if you're on live, uh, write in the comments section some informal greetings in Russian. I'd love to learn. I know Zrasti, Privyet, Kak Zizin, Shtonovova. I know those, but maybe you can teach me uh, one that's new. And lastly, what's happening? So I think literally we could translate this into Russian as Shtopraiz Hordit. Um, but that's not what people are asking, uh, literally, when they hear what's happening. They're asking, how are you? What's new? And so you just say, what's happening? Nothing. How are you? That's a good, good answer to have. So my tip for greetings and informal greetings is that if you go to the United States, it might... Oh, kaksam. Thank you. That's a good one. I'm going to put that up on the screen. I'm going to use that from now on. Um, Americans are very friendly, for the most part, uh, even to strangers. And they like, um, they, it's not uncommon to be in a grocery store, like I think here, and, and the grocery store clerk will talk to you and say, how are you doing today? Or they might ask you informally, so what's happening? What's new? And you won't know them. But it's polite to engage them and say hello and smile back. It's not strange behavior. Um, this, this depends on um, from city to city, but um, to just feel the culture. If people talk to you and you don't know them as strangers, they're not trying to do something bad to you. They just are friendly. All right, so... This got me thinking the other day. I am lazy sometimes learning Russian. I, I don't want to put the work in that I need to. So it got me thinking, what are some terms for lazy people uh, in English? And it turns out we have quite a few. So uh, this is just maybe more interesting for your, to expand your vocabulary. So let's go with couch potato. Anybody know couch potato? It's a, it's a strange term, but couch potato just means someone who's lazy, someone who sits on the couch all day. So if, I've, if my wife's been running around doing work and I'm sitting there watching TV and she'll say, you're such a couch potato today. You're not doing anything. That's what, uh, that's what it means. So it's a potato that lays on the couch. And you know couch, right? Divan. Lazy bones. Lazy bones is exactly the same thing. Um, it's maybe an older term, but sometimes you'll hear people say, ah, oh, he's such, don't be a lazy bones. Lazy bone, bones, um, not alive, and lazy would be not moving, really, or not doing much. So it's another term for lazy bones. This photo here would be somebody who's pretty lazy, I think. He can't even, he can't, he's so lazy, he can't even use his hands to feed himself. <laughs> uh, hello, Alexander. All right, so let's go on to the next one. Slacker, good good word to know. Uh, it's a it's a slang term, but uh, you can use it lots of different ways. 
uh, slacker is a person like a couch potato. Slacker takes shortcuts, doesn't really um, want to do what's right. Or, I mean, do the hard work. He just kind of lets, um, kind of sits back and relax, relaxes. So good one. And when I was little, my uncle would tease me. He would come to my sporting events, my basketball games, and he would say, Matt, you're such a slacker, as a joke. And it's from uh, a famous movie, Back to the Future, uh, where you probably remember Marty McFly. Uh, no, it was George McFly, his father. Um, they were always calling him a slacker. It means somebody lazy, who's lazy. Lollygagger, <laughs> another one. Kind of a weird word. I don't know if you'll hear it that much, but if you ever see it, um, you can you can recognize that oh that's not a not a compliment. Lollygagger means somebody kind of just head in the clouds, doesn't care. And lastly, uh, goof offs. A goof off is someone who doesn't take anything seriously. You know, they play games, they don't listen in class, or they don't don't put in serious work, like these two people are doing here in this meeting. So. Uh, Goof off is another one. Go to goof off, you can use it as a verb. To goof off is to, I don't know it in Russian. Maybe you can help me with that. And if, you, if you're watching this either live or maybe later on when it's recorded, s send me a comment and say, I know what the word goof off means in Russian. Because I'd, I would like to know. Okay. So let's move on to, oh, that's my just Be careful. Don't, don't use these words for people. Um, they're not nice but you should at least understand them. And if, there, if there's a moment when it calls for that, then, then use it. Okay. Speak, talk, tell, say. <laughs> so we're gonna go through this quickly. This, these four verbs are a little tricky because they all mean the same thing, sort of. Right? Gavrit. And I had a friend contact me asking me how to, to tell the difference. And, she said, oh, it's so easy, right? And, and she was joking. And then I said, well, you know, there's a difference between skazat, gavrit, raskazat, raskazivat, uh, all sorts of... Uh, so it's a little bit hard in Russian, too, to know quite exactly to use these. But we're going to go quick. So speak. When you want to use the word speak, it is more formal. It means the same as talk. And... Um, it's used more with one-way communication. I speak to you. Or the best way to use this is only when you're talking about languages, like Russian, German, Chinese, English. So you can see my, my example there. My dog speaks fluent, speaks German, German uh, fluently. Uh, she does not, but that's just a good example. So think about when you're talking about languages, you speak. Talk. It's in more informal than speak, but it's almost the same. Um, and the famous line you see here, Robert De Niro in Taxi Driver um, said, are you talking to me? He didn't say, are you speaking to me? Speaking would be a, a, add a little bit of formality to it. So are you talking to me? You cannot say, I talk Russian. I don't talk English. I speak English. So always know that that's, that's the way it works. I can't tell you why, just that's how it uh, and lastly, uh, not lastly, we have third next to last. Say. It's used most often without a personal object. Or you can say something to someone, but you can't say him or say her or say me. So, for example, he says, are you talking to me? And I said that I was not talking to him. So you see how says is in there. He says that we are friends. He says that uh, I live in Russia. So you have says that. So, что. that's how you remember. All right? And lastly, to tell. Tell is when you have the uh, indirect object, where you have someone. So you're going to tell someone about something. So my example sentence is ridiculous, but every day I tell strangers how much I love them. They always tell me to go away. <laughs> it's 
So see how there's tell strangers, tell someone, and then we know what it is. You can't say every day I say strangers how much I love them. It hurts my ears to hear that. It's not correct. But always tell me to go away. Tell me what you think. So my tip is that if you don't remember exactly how to use these all the time because it's hard, just memorize some phrases and then you might start to feel when it's right. So a, a classic one is, uh, I would say, Ya pridam privet. I will tell him hi. Or he says hi. He says this. Or tell me about it. Tell me. Or speak your mind is another one. But these are common phrases that you can learn. So hopefully this helps you just a little bit in perfecting and cleaning up your grammar when you're, um, you're trying to communicate in English. So um, I'm going to move now. I think I got everybody up. Yes, we have a special guest today. Uh, Pavel, can you, I, Pavel, can you uh, see us? I think I, I can't hear you right now for some reason. Hmm. Okay, can you hear me now? There we do. And I have your name upon, yep. and it's incorrect, so I'm going to take it off because I don't want people thinking your name is Pavel Philips. <laughs> Filipov. No, no. <laughs> so, uh, yes. nice to have you. I'd like to introduce you to our audience. Uh, Pavel is the editor in chief at Echo Moskvi, uh, Volgograd. He also is an editor and works at Komskomolska Pravda Radio here in Yekaterinburg. He is originally from Nizhny Tagil, so he's a 100% Sverdlovsk Oblast, or Sverdlovchan, or Sverdlovchanin, is that how you say it in, in, in Russian? Uh, he has been it, in, it is. <laughs> he's been in radio for 22 years, working on and off. Um, and if you get the chance to meet uh, Pavel, or Paul as in English, um, you will f recognize that his English is fantastic if he speaks to you in English. <laughs> um, that is um, an interesting... This is an overestimation. I <laughs> no, I can vouch. He, his accent is nearly perfect. Uh, he is, um, his fluency is, is near perfect. Uh, but I'd like you to talk a little bit how you came to this point uh, in your language career. So... You spoke English at uh, a young age quite well. Tell us a little bit about that. Well, um, well, firstly, I started learning English at a regular school when I was 10 years old, uh, which was back in the 80s. And uh, when the Soviet Union started to fall apart, different uh, small businesses appeared, and one of the business that <laughs> involved me into learning English was the um, so-called language courses for the adults. I was the only 12-year-old kid back then in 1990 who attended those courses, and uh, these actually uh, – they took about two months, I think. And this actually got me speaking, you know, this this the so-called language barrier, and I overcame it. And uh, uh, and then I just got into a, a very good school, and uh, one of my teachers, one of my English teachers, was um, the the guy who I who actually taught me later at the university. Mm -hmm. So you can imagine the the requirements that he applied to us, the school kids, mm -hmm. and he 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 used to teach. English uh, intonation and and grammar and all this stuff. So and then I took part in uh, the exchange program that was called Freedom Support Act, later known as FLEX, mm -hmm. which um, unfortunately is closed now. And uh, I lived uh, in the states for a year in California. And but but actually, um, one of the requirements to take part in this program was. Uh, fluent English back then. So I went to the States having already, you know, uh, a pretty be, being pretty fluent in English uh, at that point when I was 16. And then when I returned, I entered the teacher's training university and my major was English. So this got me um, 
not only speaking, but knowing the theory of the language, knowing the, the history of the language, and so on and so forth. And But then again, I have uh, a few of my friends, my co-eds, who's, uh, who forgot the language, who don't use the language every day, like I do, for example, um, and uh, they can't speak, even though they were pretty fluent and, and they spoke pretty well uh, when we studied at the, at the university. So uh, I think that um, having decent decent English, having decent pronunciation is uh, only uh, achievable whenever you speak the language every day, at least for a while. And I can share the tips of uh, how to uh, how to actually maintain this level uh, on an everyday basis. So before we get to that, I have a question. When you went to California, you were in what city uh, San, near San Diego? Uh, it was uh, Los Alamitos near Long Beach. Long Beach. What yep. is your vi- most vivid memory of hearing a word and saying, like, what, is, what the heck does that mean? And then later you learned it. Um, do you have an example of? Uh, I have so many examples that <laughs> I, I would fail to recall any particular example. But uh, uh, but then again, one of one of my tips would be if you hear a word, and uh, you ask, uh, for example, what the meaning of this word is. I used to apply this word for a number of times in my in my everyday speech to sort of let it fall in my memory. Let it, you know, blend in in my memory and uh, not to forget it. Um, so was that hard at the beginning? Did you spend the first few months uh, kind of, you, you could understand, but then you couldn't understand other other things. There was the, the ba- probably the basic communication when people are speaking at you, you understand or you understood. Yeah. But maybe watching a television program or hearing overhearing people talk. This is what happens to me in Russian where... I understand when they're speaking to me, usually, but if I listen to two people, I get lost because they're using too many uh, in unfamiliar uh, constructions. I didn't have this kind of problem. What I had, the two problems that I had was uh, that my uh, vocabulary was too small back then, and uh, I couldn't instantly pick a word I, I needed mm-hmm. for a conversation, for example. The other one was uh, that. Uh, what we call now the cultural code, meaning that uh, some of the jokes, mm-hmm. some of the uh, some of the references that people use in their everyday speech or on television or in the movies, uh, I didn't know and I couldn't read it and I couldn't apply it. So uh, whenever people mm-hmm. laugh at something uh, and I was like, "What the hell are you talking about?" They u- usually used to tell me, "Well, this is an inside joke." So uh, you'll you'll learn it later, <laughs> which I did. Okay. So what um, quickly? Uh, what what advice do you have for today for for people wanting to take their English just a little bit higher? You know, they they speak well, but uh, maybe we don't have an, a lot of confidence, um, and they want to get just at that a little bit higher level. That would be simple. Uh, well, firstly, one of the most effective things would be uh, watching uh, movies with their original soundtrack. I mean, in 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 English. Mm-hmm. If you don't understand, if if the actors are speaking too too uh, too quickly, too too fast, uh, turning on subtitles in English would be uh, a solution. Then, if you want to speak, you can just uh, take any text, any kind of text be it magazine or website or whatever, and read it aloud. Or if you, uh, um, if you, you have to have a good ear. Like uh, uh, for music, for, for language, it's, it's pretty simple. If you're, if you're good at singing or if you're good at uh, playing an instrument, well, whatever it be, uh, a guitar or a piano, uh, that would help. I don't know how it's how it's um, mm-hmm. um, how, how it's done, but it, it helps. Mm-hmm. So, um, just reading aloud. Uh, whenever you're alone, whenever uh, nobody can hear you, <laughs> you can read aloud. You can practice different types of pronunciation mm-hmm. and uh, different types of intonation. If you have a reference, like uh, you can go to YouTube and um, 
um, find any video on TED or wherever, it doesn't matter. Uh, try repeating word by word, putting the video on pause, whatever the speaker is saying, mm-hmm. because uh, this this was helpful for me and uh, to you know to polish the uh, pronunciation, uh, and I hope it will be helpful for you too. Well, that's great. That's great advice, and I think one one thing is to always be patient with yourself. It's not you can't yeah. you can't learn everything in a day. I took your advice. Um, um, we have, I, I, that um, my my teacher helped me for Russian. Said you need to just watch some Russian films and don't put the subtitles on. Just listen and watch, and you'll have to look, get used to the figuring it out. Now I'm watching this show called I think it's called Fartsa uh, on Netflix, mm-hmm. and it's about uh, some. It's about 1960s Soviet Union. Um, and I don't right now. I watched. I like it. I'm feeling, illegal trade. Uh, yes, and I understand in general what's going on. Now there are some details I don't quite understand, and but I'm just forcing myself just to go okay. But it is helping with um, how people speak because it's really quick, and um, I have no doubt if I keep watching every day that it will help. So I encourage everybody else. Um, we had a question. Uh, Vikrant said, "If what is your tone deaf?" Um, I'm not going to speak as an expert, but um, Pavel, do you think, uh, you know, accents, they're great to be good if you have an accent, but you don't always have to have the perfect accent to speak English. And I think if you just try, um, it, will, it will work out. But what, what are your thoughts if you have a hard time hearing those different sounds and the pronunciations? Um, well, that's, a, that's an interesting question. I... Uh... Well, being tone deaf is uh, is is not you know um, it's it's not it's not so bad <laughs> I would say um, my solution my question my solution would be would still be uh, you know trying to to listen mm-hmm. and to repeat word after word uh, you don't have to listen in long phrases just just try it. Mm-hmm. give it a go. I, I don't. I don't know. What think, else to advise? No, I, I think luckily we're not. Un, unlike some um, you know, languages in, in Eastern Asia that require tones. Um, yeah. You know, I know that English speakers have a very difficult time knowing the difference between li, li, and li. Uh, I, I don't speak uh, Mandarin or anything, but I know that's a difficult thing for us to learn, and uh, other cultures uh, are able to just do that naturally. So. I think we all can learn it. It's just can be difficult. Uh, Tanya just wanted to say, wanted to give. Uh, she says hello. Very useful advice, Pavel. Thanks a lot. And thumbs up from Vikrant. Thank you. <laughs> so we're about um, at the end of our program, um, but I, I wanted to thank you for um, coming on and, and sharing your 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 experience. And I think your experience and, and it's no doubt your time in California really helped f- uh, strengthen your it language did. It did. Uh, because. Uh, like any time you go, to, any time you go to a foreign country, and you really do get into speaking the language, it is you learn ten times faster, and you learn. All but you know, you know, actually, uh, th- there was uh, a div- one difficult thing that happened to me afterwards. Mm-hmm. So I used to learn. Well, first of, it's it's really natural that you forget some words in Russian after you've spoken English for so long. But then again, whenever you start practicing Russian again and speaking it again, you have two independent languages in your head. One is Russian. The the other the other is English, mm. and it's uh, it may be uh, strange, but it's um, a bit hard to do translation. Whenever people think you. You're good at speaking both of the languages, mm-hmm. and you can you can interpret and translate really easily. It's not the fact; it's not so. Yeah. So it takes it takes time to build those um, those links between words and between expressions. Oh, absolutely! Interpretation's a, an art form, and just because you know two languages doesn't mean you can cross them. It's very hard. Yes, that's exactly. a great that's a great exactly. point. All right. Well, um, thank you again, uh, and thanks for sharing with us. And we hope uh, you'll join us maybe again in the future if you have some uh, more st- stories to share about uh, California back in the '90s. Um, so I'm gonna I'm gonna change to my screen because I'm gonna plug um, a couple. Uh, you can stay on though, just for a little bit. Um, I'm gonna. If you gotta go back to work, that's okay. <laughs> we'll let you go. All right. Take care. Bye. 
Um, so everyone, that was our lesson today. I'm glad to be back. I'm glad to see a lot of you. All right, I see quite a few people were watching today. Please share this with other people who need or want to improve their English. Um, we want to get a, a, a big group of people who um, can share ideas and thoughts. And uh, we, we, we'd love to expand our audience. So you can see those things twirling up above my head here. With Contacti, we do this live uh, twice a week, Tuesdays, and then on Thursday. Thursday, we are going to have a special group from Texas, uh, the Bishops. They're a rap and R&B group. They came to Russia last year. So please, you don't want to miss that. That's Thursday night at 8 o'clock this week. Also, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. Uh, we want to. We have all of our um, our content there. It's, you can always watch at a later time. I also want to tell you about something very exciting coming up. I'm going to put this picture right above my front of my face. We have a virtual program coming up next week. We're going to celebrate the Fourth of July, Independence Day, with a special live. Uh, program that there's going to be a lot of prizes given out. Um, we're going to have some really interesting guests. Um, I can give you a little bit, uh, tell you a little bit about it. it our, our theme is going to be a Texas barbecue and we have some maybe some guests from Texas joining us. Uh, we will be featuring a Grammy winning band group of Phantasma. They will play and perform from Austin. So I really would like to see you come and join us and come with your questions, your thoughts. And um, I feel like now over the last over the last few months, I, I know some of you. I, Vikrant, I've seen you before, um, Svetlana. Uh, some of these names um, I really I really appreciate and I feel like I know you a little bit now because I've um, uh, I see you on and, and I see your comments and um, if you have any specific uh, grammar questions or anything about English, leave it in the comments section or send us a direct message, private message, and uh, we'll always get back to you and try to help you. So um, thanks, Tatiana. It's great. To, um, thanks for your kind words, Alexei. So we'll see you next week. I'll be back. I promise I won't take a break this time. Tuesday at 11.30 a.m. Share this with your friends and anybody else you think uh, could is interested in, in learning more, improving their English. All right, take care and have a great day. Хорошего дня. До свидания.